your girl, Michi G. It's your girl Michi G and I'm back with another video If this is your first time seeing me, what's up y'all? I'm Michi and I'm your homegirl that puts you on to all things self-improvement from health to finance to mental health uh, to books all the things that's gonna make you a better person if you're working on your life's journey I'm your girl that's gonna put you on to what has helped me Okay, we family here on this channel. And if I know it, you gonna know it. So with that being said, y'all, if that sounds like something you wanna be a part of, if you have not already, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button just below. I know y'all can read, it says subscribe right up under there. Mm -hmm. Click that subscribe button to officially join my family and our community here of growth. Make sure you like this video, share this video, and tell a friend, uh, and comment. Like, y'all leave a comment, leave some love. Like, I wanna get to know y'all. So now that housekeeping is out the way, as y'all can see by the title, I haven't done this in a long time, y'all, but I got a book review for y'all. And <clears throat> today we're gonna talk about the science of stuck. Before I get into this book, two things. One, if y'all remember, I'm gonna drop the link to this video. If y'all remember my video I did about being stuck last year, I was in a really stuck place, okay? So much so that I tried to Google books about being stuck for help, cause it's like, I literally felt like I was in a box and like wanted to do all these things and I didn't know how to move out of that box. And this book really helped me. I came across this book. I'm ashamed to say how long it took me to finish this book. It took me, I started this book in December of 2022, I think, or January of 2023. I think it's December 2022. And I just now finished it. But let me tell y'all, it wasn't a hard read. I think my ADHD just kicked in and like, <laughs> Since I've started this book, I've also knocked out simultaneously three other books. And so it's like other books would come along and take my attention and it just prolonged me finishing this book. So that's all. Nonetheless, we're gonna get into this book review today. Let me just say overall, this book was packed with so many life-changing gems that I needed. It's a lot of chapters in this book. So I can't go through everything, but I've narrowed it down to three main points that helped me and that stuck with me, and so I'm gonna pass them on to you. But again, I encourage you to find this book, read this book for yourself if you're like me and was just feeling stuck and didn't have any direction or whatever. I highly recommend this book. It had 10 chapters. Let me at least read the chapters to y'all. Chapter one was anxiety is a, super, is a superpower. Without it, we stay stuck. Chapter two was the hidden benefits, benefits of staying stuck. Chapter three was the myth of motivation. Chapter four is shadow intelligence, why you need the parts of yourself you hate. And that's one that wasn't a point, but when I tell y'all they got to the nitty gritty in that chapter about just shadow self and our shadow parts and how they need love just like our other parts of ourselves, um, they got to it with that, okay? In chapter five on how to human, three crash courses in intimacy. Chapter six, the sticky world of friendships and dating. Chapter seven, the emotionally unskilled family. That's one that triggered your girl. I got triggered during that whole entire chapter, okay? Uh, chapter eight, trust your instruments, how to recover from toxic habits. <laughs> Chapter nine, becoming an emotional adult. And chapter 10, let's play. So let me go ahead and get into uh, my three points. The first point came from chapter one, anxiety is your superpower. If y'all know me, I have anxiety real, real bad. Carisha voice, real bad. And so it's something that I've been experiencing in the last two or three years and I've been trying to figure out like, where is it coming from? What, why do I experience it? What's happening? And initially, I thought like it's diet, it's all these things. And this chapter pretty much confirmed for me what I thought about anxiety. To sum it up, this chapter pretty much talked about how you can think of anxiety as like a check engine light. So what the check engine light is to your car, letting you know something's going on under the hood, something you need to check out. Anxiety is our check engine light. So it's, it's pretty much the thing that happens to let you know that, hey, there's some type of unaddressed 
emotional issue or injury going on in you and you need to figure out what that is and address it. And the problem is a lot of us don't address those things because we don't know. And so we just have reoccurring anxiety. And that's true for your girl. I did a vlog about having anxiety and a whole panic attack. When I think back to even that, what caused that, like around that time I had a little family issue going on and I just kind of told myself like I'm good, I'm fine, it didn't bother me, but deep down like it made me angry and I would not address it and I would not say that that thing made me upset and I think that's why if you go back to that video, like that happened out of nowhere. I'll put that below too, but that panic attack in real time happened out of nowhere and it was around the time of my birthday or whatever so it talks about how anxiety is sometimes a result of ignoring yourself it's usually a result of something outside of yourself and not inside of yourself and that was encouraging to know because sometimes I'll be like I feel off I feel wrong I feel crazy I feel like I'm sick and it's a subconscious thing that happens that we're just unaware of. So shout out to this chapter for making me feel like I'm not crazy for experiencing anxiety. Like it literally kept saying, you're not crazy, you're not crazy. And it went into deeper details about anxiety that we'll be here all day if I told y'all. So that's short and sweet what I got as a takeaway for from that chapter. And also as it pertains to being stuck, I know you're probably like, what does anxiety have to do with being stuck? And I think that sometimes we can be so anxious about things that it makes us stuck. So like you said, a lot of anxiety, the root of it is unresolved issues or unaddressed issues within ourselves. And as a result of that, we just like, we want to do things, but it literally paralyzes us emotionally and sometimes, you know, mentally. So there's that. Also another point that really stuck out and when I tell y'all this is what triggered me so much. Chapter seven, the emotionally unskilled family. I said I'm triggered, but I'm pretty sure every single person that reads this chapter will be a little triggered because I think everybody will see parts of their family and as described in this chapter. The chapter pretty much looks at all dynamics of a family. And what I thought was interesting is that it started off by saying like, if you look at families in uh, fictional history, so like sitcoms, cartoons, and television history, think about the most happiest, healthiest family that you could think of. I'll tell you who I didn't expect them to say. The Adams family is one of the happiest, healthiest, most high functioning family in all of fictional television. When I thought about it, I was like, the Adams family, like, but when they broke it down, Morticia and Gomez, like they were so in love. They loved each other in a healthy way. They were very passionate for each other. Let me read from the source. So the family places a high value on unique expression. And when you think about it, like Wednesday, the son, all everybody in that family was uniquely themselves and nobody was judged. They said how they felt. There wasn't really arguments or things like that. And I was like, hmm, you're right. Uh, Morticia and Gomez both had their own little support groups and hobbies and interests outside of each other so they weren't codependent. Any outsiders were welcomed in their home. They weren't treated as strangers. They were treated like family. And also they were a multi-generational family living in one household which is rare today and I think it's also needed today. Um, and so when they broke it down I was like you know they are a good example of being a, ha a healthy, happy, high functioning family. And I never thought about it like that. This chapter also talked about attachment styles, parenting approaches and styles, and also how normal families can also cause trauma. I just wanna read one thing from the book because I feel like it's not talked about enough. And I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible. This is kind of where I got a little triggered because I was like, ugh. Well, right before this, but this kind of drove it home for me. I was like, ugh. 10 signs of an emotional, emotionally unskilled family. Sign one, non-malicious gaslighting. So how many times have you had a parent or, or a guardian or somebody and you tried to tell them, hey, what you said when I was younger, around this time, it really hurt me. And because of that, it's hindered X, Y, and Z in my life. And they come back and be like, no, I didn't. No, no, you're not hindered. Like you're doing amazing. You have a job, that didn't affect you. 
that is gaslighting <laughs> and I can tell you that happens a lot. Look at you, you look like, girl, yes, I know. Number two, parentifications. The parent that's like, I'm headed out to happy hour or I'm headed out to, ha well my friends, girl, have, you know, take care of your siblings. The parent that puts the siblings, the older siblings in charge of the younger siblings. Without saying too much, I have talked to quite a few older siblings and, and they're younger, like they're younger. And I think that as parents, they don't really realize that like you put a lot of responsibility on the older kids. Uh, number three, infant infantilization. So that would be like a parent treating a grown adult like a child. So a mom being like, well, baby, did you brush your teeth today? Did you, did you take a shower? Do you need me to get this for you? Do you need me to get that for you? And <laughs> the child being like, mom, I'm 34. Like, I got it. Thanks. And number four is triangulation. So basically it's like, let's say there's three family members or three siblings and two of them pretty much are ganging up on one. So one might, they pretty much talk about the person behind their back, like, you know, she sucks or she's horrible. I can't stand her. But then the third person is usually affected by that because like y'all are always talking about me and ganging up on me. Perfectionism is pretty much families like no feelings are allowed only performances so you got to be perfect in everything you do there's I don't want to know that you're tired right now I don't want to know that you're sick like just do it just get it done productionism pretty much parents just making it so that the kids are productive and getting things done but they don't really have time enough to play and be children children need freedom and time to play blurred lines is pretty much where parents, the example that was given with blurred lines is you need to hug me even if you don't want to. And so blurred lines reflect a dynamic in which boundaries of the body are not taught or respected. So like even kids, you know, they might not want to be hugged. They might not want to hug that family member and it might be for a reason, but we just don't know. But we, we always tell kids like, do what we say. Controlling, that was another trigger do as I say, do as I say and do it now, okay? Number nine is closed systems. So like a family being like, you can only trust us in this house. Nobody else's opinion matters. What's in this house stays in this house. Any opinions, any questions, it's in this house. And number twin, no, number twin, number 10 is rigid roles. So that's when parents pretty much tell kids who they are. So you're the athletic one, you're the tall one, you're the baby, you're the addict, you're the smart one, things like that. And so I thought that was interesting because I think that every family has experienced one type of those unskilled traits for an unskilled family. Like we all come from some type of unskilled family. And so I just thought that was interesting. I also thought that they said all families are dysfunctional to some type of agree because I think our parents love us and our elders and our guardians love us and they don't intentionally mean to cause us trauma but unintentional trauma is still trauma. All in all it was just a good chapter about the dynamics of family and a lot of what makes us feel stuck is the inner voice from our inner child from things that happened from our families and so I thought it was very dope that they touched on the dynamic of family as it pertains to being stuck to. Which brings me to my last point, chapter 10, which was Let's Play. Being the last chapter of this book, I love that they compared life to the game of chess. Chess and life are both complex and suspenseful. Like there's not an easy move to make. You know, it's always a what's gonna happen next type ordeal when it comes to chess and life. With both, if you play with no strategy, it probably won't end well. Um, and that's what the book kind of talked about and that is the truth. If you don't make plans and goals and guidelines for yourself, it might not end so well. I, my husband taught me how to play chess last year. I'm a little rusty on it, so I, I actually talked to him when reading this, <laughs> reading this chapter, like I need a refresher. Um, because it talks about all the different pieces, if I remember correctly. I know there's the king, the queen, the knight, if I'm not mistaken. There's another one, I think, and the pawn. You would think the pawn is the least valued piece, but <clears throat> it talked about 
depending on the right move that's being made, the pawn could absolutely probably be one of the most powerful pieces on the board if you move it correctly, such as life. You know, how many times do we have a low value on something, but then we make a good decision and it's like, okay, this just improved this strategic move just just improved my life <laughs> you know what i'm saying in a big way and so i think we have to start looking at life that way it talked about how like all the pieces on the board you can look at it as specific areas of your life so one piece on the board could be your spiritual life then another piece could be your health Another piece could be your children. Another piece could be career. Another piece could be like your social life. Whatever you have going on in your life, there was a, a, a drawing of the chessboard with, you know, different areas of your life. And just kind of getting you to think about how to be strategic with balancing and handling each. And at the end of that chapter, I love how it talked about, I love how it talked about the fact that stuck turns into unstuck the minute you decide to move, even if you take a step in the wrong direction. So it talked about like GPS systems. Like if you just parked in the car, you're not gonna get directions. You're not gonna get any type of feedback. But when you start rolling, you start getting feedback. Even if you're going the right direction, you receive feedback to correct it. So such is life. I'm not gonna keep y'all too much longer. Those are my three points and my three takeaways from this book that stuck with me. And I can say to date, I've made a complete turnaround from where I was in that video. I think, I don't even know if we were, I know it was a thought to move, like we wanted to move away from Nashville and move out of that apartment, but everything at that time just felt like we were stuck. We want to do all these things and we can't for some reason. And reading this book, I realized everything in here triggered me because I literally was just like, I couldn't move. I, it, I don't know. It was just like, just start making moves. And once we did, once we found us a place outside of Nashville, I moved away from Nashville, got a new place, just started going about things. Hubby's now on a food truck. Like we started putting some of our goals into motion and like, even if it ain't popped yet, even with the YouTube, like we ain't where we want to be, but we're at least moving. And I thank God for this book short and sweet okay again if y'all haven't checked this book out this is the science of stuck by miss Britt frank thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope i inspired you to check out this book and to get unstuck and uh i'm gonna see y'all next friday bye y'all